My name is Jack Fuhrer. I'm the Associate Dean for Admissions for the Renaissance School of Medicine. I came to Stony Brook in 1988. Uh, that actually was my second time at Stony Brook. I was an undergraduate here between 1969 and 1973. Uh, in 1988, when I came to Stony Brook, uh, I was recruited to be the clinical director of the HIV Center. And in 1997, uh, I came down to the dean's office to, to assume the role of associate dean for admissions. Uh, in addition, I continued to practice infectious diseases and I continued to run the HIV AIDS program here at Stony Brook. Uh, as a, the Associate Dean for Admissions, uh, one of the first things we did is review our admissions process. We have uh, really taken a much more holistic approach to, to uh, the evaluation of applicants. Uh, in addition to, of course, their grades and their MCATs, uh, we look at their letters of recommendation, the strength of the letters of recommendation, their co-curricular activities, their health and non-health related activities, whether they participated as leaders uh, in their communities uh, at the undergraduate level or even before. Uh, and we really are very, very interested in the path they've traveled to get to the point of applying to medical school. Uh, we believe this is very, very important. We believe that uh, that it will eventually add to the diversity of the medical community here at Stony Brook, uh, to the diversity within their class. Uh, and I believe we have been very, very successful. I think if you look at our student body, uh, they are incredibly diverse. And by diversity, I don't mean simply, um, you know, racial or ethnic diversity. We have we certainly have a very racially and ethnically diverse class, but we have people who come from all different backgrounds. Uh, nearly 30, 35% of our class come from lower socioeconomic backgrounds where they are the first in their families to even have a, a college education. Uh, we think that's extremely important. Um, in addition, uh, they, we have students who have taken the traditional path of entering into medical school uh, straight from college, and we have many, many of our students who had non-traditional backgrounds, some of whom have had other careers prior to uh, applying to medical school. Uh, so that lends itself to a very interesting social dynamic within the student body. And I'm very, very proud of our students. I think they're really quite, quite special, uh, and uh, it's actually one of the strengths of our uh, medical school. Nowadays, our students, when they graduate, uh, many of them graduate with uh, $200,000 plus in debt, uh, and that's quite, quite significant. So we're doing uh, a lot to try to change that. I know Dr. Wertheim, it's a major priority for him. And of course, that's music to my ears, uh, that it is a priority for him uh, to really build up our endowments so that we can provide more scholarship money for our students. So it's not just simply reducing debt, you know, it's really the impact that that will have on our student body, the impact it'll eventually have on uh, the doctors that we graduate and, and the, the communities that they serve students want to go to an institution where they're going to get an excellent medical education. An institution that has a really strong reputation uh, amongst its peers. So, and, and I think Stony Brook is that. You know, we do provide an excellent medical education for our students. Uh, we provide uh, many research opportunities to them. And, and, and what they see here at Stony Brook is that we are an institution where patients come to get excellent care from really uh, terrific, compassionate physicians. Uh, you might wonder why is it important to take a holistic approach to admissions. Uh, yeah, it, we, we really look for well-rounded doctors. Uh, we believe it's very, very important because doctors need to be more than just science geeks. Uh, they really need to be able to relate to patients. And 
You can't just relate to a patient based on your science knowledge. You, you need to be able to relate to them on a very personal level. You know, and I, uh, not to pat myself on the back, but when I talk to my patients, I try to find at least one or several common denominators. And when I start off the conversation with them, one of the first things I, I will ask them is about either their work or their, their interest in sports or the things that really interest them that I know something about. And that way I can build that trust with them. And I think that's the same thing when you have a well-rounded doctor, doctor who has interests outside of medicine, uh, that person is probably more likely to be able to relate to a patient and the backgrounds and understanding their background. Nowadays, we talk about cultural competency and the importance of cultural competency in medical training. Uh, we, we really focus on that here at Stony Brook to make our graduates uh, culturally competent. And I think we've been very, very successful uh, in a number of ways. Uh, I could tell you that uh, our graduates, when they leave here, uh, we survey uh, the program directors of the residency programs that they enter. Uh, and consistently, our graduates are in the top 25% of their residency classes. So we have done a really excellent job in our training. At least that's my belief.